Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship service. Let's all stand and prepare ourselves for worship. Well, welcome. We're glad you're here today. Uh, if you weren't here, if y'all weren't here, I'd be by myself. And that was just, I don't like that all that much. Unless I'm praying. Now, when I'm praying, I don't mind being by myself. Because God is with me. I'm talking to Him. And He's yelling at me. And <laughs> so, oh, praise the Lord. Uh, listen, don't, uh, this, guess what? This is still casual summer Sundays. And I, I think some of y'all abuse that, but uh, <laughs> that's all right. That's why we have casual summer Sundays. And guess what? You know how many more we got? Aww. Next week is the last casual summer Sunday, <laughs> August the 28th. And then we start Labor Month, September. And then we go to October and have Halloween. Yay! And uh, we're hoping, hoping we're going to do something fun for Halloween called Trunk or Treat. Anybody ever <laughs> gone to a Trunk or Treat? It's fun. And we're going to try to do that. So, uh, whew, we got a lot of things planned that we're thinking about and going to do and try to pull off if we can. Um, I shouldn't. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Uh, <laughs> we may even have a tent revival. Have y'all ever been to a tent revival? <laughs> let me let me tell you, I got a friend named Bubba. And uh, <laughs> Bubba goes to the tent revival and he, he listens to the preacher. And after a while, the preacher asks anyone with needs come forward and be prayed over. Well, Bo Bubba uh, slowly rises from his chair and he gets in line and when it's his turn, the preacher says, Bubba, what you want me to pray about? And Bubba says, Preacher, I need you to pray for my hearing. So the preacher puts his 
uh, finger right, uh, finger from the right hand in Bubba's right ear, and his left hand on top of his head, and he prays a little bit, and then he changes around, puts finger from the right hand or the left hand. What did I say? <laughs> anyway, he puts a finger from the other hand in his ear, and his head and hand on top, and he prays a little bit more. And after a few minutes, the preacher removes his hands and says, "Bubba." How's your hearing now? And Bubba says, I don't know, preacher. It ain't till next Wednesday. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, surely I've got some more announcements. We don't have to put up with stuff like that. They might got any announcements they want to make. Okay, we're all good. All right, then let's prepare for worship. Let's take a few minutes and just be still and know that He is God and He's here with us and we want to worship Him. So let's bow our heads together and we'll resume with our invocation in just a few minutes. Father God, make us aware of your great spirit here in this place. Touch and heal our brokenness. Lift us out of despair and doubt. Dry our tears of pain and sorrow. Comfort and nourish us with the many blessings of your great love, O oh God. Lord, may we flourish and blossom in the warmth and compassion of your healing, love, and grace. Most of all, Father, help us to feel your presence with us, even now. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Okay, let's continue worshiping, standing and singing together.
Amen. Remain standing for just a moment as we share our affirmation of faith together. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all, neither shadow that is cast by eternity. God is love, and everyone that loves is begotten of God and knows God. So then we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh, but we receive the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Alba, Father. Being therefore always of good courage, we walk by faith, not by sight, and we make it our aim to be well-pleasing to him. For we know that to them that love God, he works all things together for good. Amen. Be seated, please. Thank you. Had a number of uh, prayer concerns that we sent out uh, each week on Wednesday. And I hope you got that list. And uh, if you have, if you didn't get that list, then if you'll please let me know and let me have your email address, I will be happy to adds you to the list. So you do get that prayer concern list every week. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, that you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In the whole scheme of things, in the stretches of eternity, it seems presumptuous at times to come before you with our problems and our concerns. But here we are, as we have been many times before, pleading our case before you. And we come in the confidence that whoever we are and whatever our need, you're not going to turn aside from us. As a matter of fact, you invite us to come. Father, we would not forget to lift up to you those who are sick in body or spirit, those who have been called out today, especially those on our prayer concerns list. We ask that you touch them at the point of their needs and may they know that we care. We are tempted to anxiety or worry as we see so much suffering all around us, but grant to us as persons and a people of faith that confesses we do not know what the future holds but we do know who holds the future lord equip us to bear your light and truth to a new generation and give us the patience to wait for you to move in new and different ways to tell the old old story of jesus and his love and now, Lord, hear us as we pray with the words you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. <coughs> Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If our ushers come forward at this time, we'll receive our morning off. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for all the blessings we have received. And thank you for this opportunity we have to just to return to you and your church a portion of what you've blessed us with. Take these gifts, these tithes and offerings, multiply them and use them in a great way to bring others into your kingdom. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Question. How many of you have ever been in a fight? I'm not talking about a word fight. I'm talking about a boom, boom, boom. Okay. All right. 
How many, how many of you after that fight have been sitting there with two black eyes and a bloody nose and you said, boy, that was a great fight. <laughs> how many of you ever did that? I don't think I did that, ever. Here's, here's how that works. It's only a good fight if you won. If you, if you didn't win, it wasn't a good fight. If the other person didn't look worse than you do, it wasn't a good fight. <clears throat> All right. Paul calls the Christian war with Satan a good fight in 1 Timothy 6.12. We're going to talk about this, okay? But the main part of this message is covered in Psalm 91. And Psalm 91 is a Psalm 91 is the kind of psalm you can wake up every morning and read it, go over it, and as part of your devotional, and you'd be better off. Psalm 91. I think I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure it was written by Moses, and because uh, I know Moses wrote Psalm 90. So I think he just got carried away and wrote Psalm 91 too. But anyway, <clears throat> Brent and I had a really good friend who has gone on to be with the Lord now, but he introduced me to this song. He said he read it every morning. He never started the day without reading Psalm 91. So let's read. If you have your Bible, turn to Psalm 91. If you don't have your Bible, it's not going to be up on the screen. Sorry. So if you don't have your Bible with you, grab one out of the pew and use that. And that will teach you a good lesson to always bring your Bible to church. Bring your tools to work with you, right? If you're a carpenter, bring your hammer. If you're a mechanic, bring your wrenches. If you're a Christian and you're going to church, Bring your Bible. Got it? Okay. Enough said. <laughs> Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Listen to verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will, you, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness <clears throat> nor the plague that destroy, destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me. Here's where it changes. <clears throat> In verse 14. It's not the psalmist talking anymore. In verse 14, 15, and 16. This is God talking to you. And God says. Because he loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. 
I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. See why it would help you to read that, everyone? If you can't feel good after reading that, I don't know when you could feel good. It's a great song. And it has a lot to say to us, especially verses 14, 15, and 16. So, with that in mind, Paul calls the Christian war with Satan a good fight. 1 Timothy 6, 12, Paul writes, Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life for which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Why is it a good fight? Because we're supposed to win. We win by praying. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Matthew 6.13, part of the great Lord's Prayer. We win by putting on the whole armor of God and by building a hedge of protection around ourselves. Are you tired of eating the devil's dust? Are you tired of him always winning? Then you've got to prepare yourself to stand in the victory Jesus has already won for you by putting on the whole armor of God and by learning to build that hedge of protection, to build that divine hedge for yourself and your loved ones, daily declare in faith, Psalm 91, verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Let me tell you something. You don't know how powerful those few words are. In the Amplified Bible, the next verse reads, For then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. In the remainder of Psalm 91, especially verses 9 and verses 14, there are three reasons, or I call them three becauses, why you can claim God's protection. First one is because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, your habitation. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge. Verse 9. In another place, Psalm 22, verse 3 reads, Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. I want us to take a look at that same verse in the Amplified Bible. It says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabits, literally to sit down and dwell among, the praises, literally the songs and psalms of Israel. Amplified Bible adds so much because it takes all the different meanings of each word and prints it for you to read. As believers sing praises to the Lord, this verse says that he sits down among them and he's enthroned upon those praises. God inhabits the praise of his people. How do you make the Lord your habitation? One way is Paul describes in Ephesians 5.19 Speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. I love that verse. And as you do, as I said, God inhabits your praises. As you walk with Him in the Spirit, He's going to be your refuge. He's going to be all around you. He's going to build that hedge of protection around you. The second because is this. Because he has set his love upon me. Psalm 91 verse 14. There's one because in verse 9. And there are two becauses in verse 14. 
Verse 14 says, Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. You can claim God's protection if you set your love upon him. <clears throat> you set your love upon the Lord by focusing your affections upon him. By seeking him first, as the psalmist did. David, great psalmist, declared, One thing I ask of the Lord. One thing. This is what I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Wow. Psalm 27, verses 4 and 5. David said, One thing have I desired. Have you ever noticed that phrase is uh, <clears throat> kind of popular in the scriptures? Jesus said to the rich young ruler, yet you lack what? One thing. Luke 18, 22. <clears throat> Paul declared in Philippians 3, 13, this one thing I do. It's good to go to God with one thing. Pick out one thing in your life that you really feel strongly about that you need help with and take that one thing before God in prayer and ask him to touch that thing touch you at the point of your need you've got to allow the Holy Spirit to completely focus our energies and attention upon the Lord now I know most of you pray and I know you spend hopefully spend time in prayer let me tell you something, folks. You've got to focus your attention on God. You have to focus your attention on Him and His Holy Spirit and His life within you. You can't just, you can't just go to God and say, Oh, Lord, uh, heal my body. Make me well. Give me a good day. Thank you. God bless. Amen. That won't work. That doesn't work. You've got to focus your attention. You must allow the Holy Spirit to completely focus your energies and your attention upon the Lord. To set your love upon Him as you cling to Him. In absolute trust, He will be your protection. I think so many times we get into trouble because we pray and yet we don't pray in the right way. We don't focus our attention on God when we pray. We've got so many other things. There's so many things clamoring for our attention. So many things in our life that are just that are pulling at us all the time. That's why you've got to find you a place where you can be by yourself. Where you can be still and be quiet. God says in the scripture, be still. And know that I am God. Third. Third because. Because he has known my name. Verse 14. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name, God says. The name of the Lord, Proverbs 18, 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. The Lord's name signifies not only who He is, but also what He wants to be in your life. In your life. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. He's more than a Savior. He is your righteousness. He is your sanctifier. He is your peace. And He is the overflowing one present with you. He is your healer, your provider, your banner, 
your shepherd. So know his name. <laughs> he is a strong tower. Let him be what you need him to be in your life. Declare God's hedge of protection. I know sometimes uh, that sounds a little silly. Some people laugh at the idea of God's hedge of protection. But let him be your hedge of protection. And I'm not talking about those hedge, green hedge bushes that grow around the yard. You know, that's, not, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about God. Every day, make the Lord your habitation. How do I do that? Sing a song of praise. Sing, Jesus, Jesus, uh, I love you. Sing one of the songs we sang this morning. Sing, come, now is the time to worship. Just sing a little song. And you don't have to know all the words. You don't have to sing it perfectly. Sing a song. Make the Lord your habitation. Singing songs of praise. Grab you a songbook off the shelf. Go down to the bookstore, buy your little songbook, and start singing those songs of praise. Set your love upon Him and seek Him first above everything else. Know and submit to God's name. Inspect, inspect yourself. Inspect your spirit and make certain you're living in the three becauses of Psalm 91, verse 3. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save me from the snowler's fair, from the fowler's snare, not the snowler's fair, from the fowler's snare, <laughs> And from the deadly pestilence. Listen. Those three verses. Those are the ones you need to commit to memory. You need to memorize those. And be able to say them. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High. Will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge. My fortress. My God in whom I trust. Surely. He will deliver me. He will save me. From the fowler snare. And from the deadly pestilence. Those are not hard to memorize. But it would be great verses for you to commit to memory. And then. When you do that. You can stand in your armor and declare. God. You're my refuge. You're my fortress. You're my God. And you do I trust. You do I trust. <laughs> the Lord's hedge of protection. When you declare that, when you stand and declare that, the Lord's hedge, the Lord's hedge of protection will form around you like the nest around the bird. As the bird builds his nest, that nest forms around him and he gets in it. I realize that uh, as I said earlier, I realize some people kind of snicker or laugh at the idea of God's hedge of protection. But you know what? I'll tell you somebody that doesn't laugh about God's hedge of protection. Satan. The devil. He doesn't laugh about God's hedge of protection. I want you to, I want you to listen to this. In the book of Job... Verse one, in chapter 1, verse 10. Hear the complaint God made, Satan made to God about Job. Have you not put a hedge about him and his house and all that he has on every side? Satan tried to attack Job. <laughs> God told him, go at it. Attack him. And when Satan tried to attack him, he couldn't get to him. You have conferred property, a prosperity and happiness upon him in the work of his hands and his possessions have increased 
in the land. Wow. What has God done for his children? First, he puts a hedge around us, our homes, and all we have on every side of us. Secondly, he confers happiness and prosperity upon us in the work of our hands. And third, he makes our possessions increase. So every day, every day, as you pray the Lord's Prayer, and you get to that part that says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Right there. Make a little footnote and say, I declare a hedge of protection around me and all I have and my, all I own, my family, my friends. All I have. And then go on with the prayer. But say that too. Ask God to confer happiness and prosperity on the work of your hands and to make your possessions, both material and spiritual, increase in the land. Even Satan knows that God does that. He tried to attack Job and it was like running into not a hedge bush but a stone wall. He couldn't get to it. So, <clears throat> close yourself in the armor of light the Lord Jesus Christ. And when the devil attacks, when the devil comes against you, maybe he calls you on the phone. I don't know. <laughs> when the devil does that, you can leave him sitting in the dust for a change. Not you sitting in his dust but him sitting in your dust <clears throat> as you win the fight. Then simply dust off your armor, put your hands on your hips, stand in the victory. Christ has already won for you and exclaim with a grin, man, that was a good fight. You could finally say it. My, my. Now that was a good fight. Because we can say that when we acknowledge God's victory in our lives. And he says right at the first of the Psalm 91, no one can harm you. No one can come against you. <clears throat> as long as you're standing in God's protection. Now I know you're going to say, well, Pastor, why do I get sick then? Why? Why do bad things happen every once in a while? Hey, bad things are always going to happen. Even to good people. That's because Satan comes again when he can and he punches at us. God ultimately wins the battle every time. And if you're surrounded by that hedge of protection, <clears throat> you may fall down and skin your knee every once in a while, but you're going to get up. And you're going to keep going. Life is filled with little things that we don't like. But if you live in Christ's protection, you'll always overcome. And the bad things in life, <laughs> I, I know you've had some bad things happen to you. And I've had some bad things happen to me. Last Monday, I spent the whole day in the emergency room trying to figure out why I couldn't hold my head up. <laughs> trying to figure out why I couldn't stand up. I fell out of bed, tried to get back into bed, fell out again. I mean, bad things happen. Things happen to cause us problems. But God is in control. God is in control. And you know what? They couldn't find anything wrong with me. Weird. Really weird. And I felt kind of bad about that until I thought about it. I felt 
I told Brad, I said, well, that's just what I need. This happened, and now I don't know why. <clears throat> and we ended up laughing about it because, hey, it went away. It went away. I'm well. I'm preaching today. So God is alive. God is alive. Even when you run into a little rough spot in your life, that doesn't mean that God has left you. That doesn't mean that He's gone. He's still there with you. And what do you need to do? You need to hold on to Him tighter. Hold on to Him tighter. Put your trust in Him. Love Him. When those bad things happen, that's time to start singing a song of praise. Well, thank you, Lord. Praise God. I know you're going to get me through this. Hmm. My. <laughs> that was a good fight. Fight the fight of faith. Let God build that hedge of protection around you. And stay in His hedge. Stay within that protection. He will bring you through. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for all you've done. You've been so good to us. You've blessed us so richly. Father, we just thank you for all the great things you've done and you are doing and you're going to do in the future. Father, thank you for allowing us to be your children. Help us to look to you. Help us to keep our eyes on you. You be the author and finisher of our faith. It's in you that we live and move and have our very being. Thank you, God. Thank you for allowing us to know you and to be close to you every day, every moment, every day. Thank you so much for all you do. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus because we know that because of Jesus Christ, when this life here is over, we're going to be with him in glory forever. Father, we just thank you so much for that blessed promise that we know will be ours. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing near to the heart of God. If you're here today and you have a decision to make for Christ, if you'd like to have us pray for you or whatever your need is today, you meet me down here at the, in the altar and we'll be glad to be with you. Let's stand together. Please.
thank you so much for being with us today. Um, we look forward to seeing you next week. Last, the last Sunday in casual summer Sundays. Oh, wow. Anyway, we'll get through it. Saturday, the 27th at 2 p.m. here in the sanctuary, we're going to have a great memorial service as well as a service of celebration uh, for the life of our brother Pete Noah. And uh, if Pete were here, he'd say, y'all all better come. <laughs> I expect you all to be there. So <laughs> you know Pete. And uh, he'll say that probably be my birthday again. But we're going to have a great time together. Got a lot of good music. And uh, I'm not going to preach a big old long sermon. I promise. Okay? And so we're going to, we, you don't have to worry about that. But we're going to have just a good time sharing together. And there'll be a chance there for you to say a few words about Pete, that, what he meant to you. So we're going to have an open mic for a few moments. So, uh, Bridget has put a service together that, uh, and she shared with me, and it's going to be a great service. I think you'll really enjoy it. A lot. Not only will it be a, a service uh, lifting up uh, Pete and blessing him, thanking God for him, but it'll also be, I think, a lot of fun. And uh, he'd like that. So look forward to seeing you Saturday and next Sunday. So have a great week. Share our benediction together. We leave this place not as people who have all the answers. We leave this place not as people who are holier than others. We leave this place as people who have been shown a grace, a calling, and a Savior who has changed our lives forever. We're filled with a joy that's too great to be kept to ourselves. Let us go forth as children of God, and all of God's children say, Amen. Amen.